Welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Thrive Fantasy. Here's your host, Casey Bubba and Scott Bodman! And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pre-Snap Podcast, brought to you by the wonderful people at Lion Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Lion Star app and at Lion Star NFL for all the great content. They constantly tweet out their news, all the good stuff and things. And make sure you follow my partner on crime on Twitter at Bogman Sports. I'm at Pediatric Scott Bogman. How we doing, man? Uh, football is stupid, and I hate it. Uh, I hate it when the Steelers lose, especially the Raiders. They they love to do nothing more than to lose to the Raiders. Uh, super frustrating, but um, uh, my, my fantasy picks were okay this week, so I guess I'll take solace in that. If you think this is fun, guys, just wait till we do the recap of the uh, betting picks on uh, later this week. It'll be fun. Really no, fun. I thought we were skipping that this week. <laughs> uh, we shall see. We shall see. But uh, yeah, it was it was a wild week yet again. I think it's gonna be a comment that make almost every opening recap show. Wild week. It's injuries galore. Um, what we thought was gonna work week one didn't work in week two. Aaron Jones goes off. Michael Pittman goes off. Mike Evans got his. It was uh yeah. That kind of fun. Tom I Brady, said I was worried touchdowns. about Mike Evans. No, no, so. we, none of us should have been. That's for sure. But Tom Brady, five touchdowns. Does he break the record again this year? Yeah. I mean, there's an extra game. So for sure, he's going to break the record. Oh, that's true. I wasn't even counting that one in there. It just feels it just feels like it's that year where it doesn't matter who's a running back. They just he, don't want to yeah. give the ball to a running back. It's super frustrating. Yeah, it's it. that pretty much is like a lost cause over there. So we're going to run through every game, give us our thoughts. There'll be some waiver wire picks at the end, so make sure you listen for that. But most importantly, remember, we are uh, brought to you by, sponsored by Thrive Fantasy. So go check out Thrive Fantasy online and in your app store. It's a cool little concept, uh, prop bets. They pick uh, 20 different prop, prop bets each week for each event, I, I should say. You pick 10, give it an over or an under. It's a point-based system. The more you get correct is what you want to do, but you also want to get the most points along the way and win those tournaments. So go check out Thrive Fantasy. Use promo code LINESTAR, L-I-N-E-S-T-A-R, to get a first-time deposit match up to $100. And even better, the guys at LINESTAR are throwing in two free months of the premium access to the LINESTAR app. So go check out Thrive Fantasy. Create your account, sign up, deposit, use promo code LINESTAR. Okay, Bogman, let's kick things off on the recap of this week's action. Thursday night football was an absolute blast. The Washington football team take down the New York Giants 30-29. to We saw Danny Dimes run wild. We saw the football team and Taylor Haneke throw wild. What's your thoughts on this one? I mean, uh, I am not worried about Saquon Barkley after seeing him. Now, I'll say I'm worried about the coaching with the New York Giants. I don't know how you let him play 58 or 69 snaps and then design one play for him. He had one play that was designed for him and he took it for 41 yards so that was super frustrating but sterling shepherd looked great just a ppr machine unbelievable terry mclaurin owned james bradbury with that bradbury is a pretty good cover corner he had a pick in this game late but he got smoked mm. by mclaurin i uh, love the design runs for danny dimes uh, and the officiating ruined this game just like it did last week on thursday night football uh, with a terrible call at the end. Now, look, these guys, you know, refs are imperfect. They're going to get things wrong. But we have replay. You know, there should be no excuse for a play, uh, you know, a call to end a game like this. So, I don't know. This one was more, um, I guess, more viable than the shove-off, but yeah. uh, still controversial. So, uh, weird way to end it. Two Thursday night games ends, end in some controversy with the home teams taking the dubs both times. Mm -hmm. like you mentioned Pierre Garçon went nuts. Uh, Sterling Shepard back to back games clearly. Did, the did you just say the, Pierre Garçon went nuts? Sorry, I don't know why. Because I'm reading the stat here. It says, what year is it? No, I, the, the thing here says uh, McLaurin, first Washington player with 10 plus catches, 100 plus yards on touchdowns since Pierre Garçon. <laughs> so I had Pierre Garçon <laughs> in my head. And uh, yeah, T Mac, F1, whatever you want to call him. He, he was <laughs> scary no, Terry. Yeah, scary Terry. He was amazing, as we talked about before. And Shepard keeps getting it done. And uh, Galladay looks kind of dusty right now. So we'll have to see how that one plays out. Um, Patriots at the Jets to kick off our Sunday action. We said in the preview show and our picks, or at least I said, I'm pretty sure we both agreed on it. Belichick eats rookie quarterbacks for breakfast. That was my phrase. It wasn't Happy Gilmore. It wasn't the other thing. It was he eats quarterbacks for mm -hmm. breakfast. And Wilson looked so lost out there. The only thing was different is he didn't see ghosts like Sam Darnold did. So Patriots win 25-6. Thoughts on this one? 
Uh, I think that, like you said, Zach Wilson looked terrible. He's not going to look this bad all year, but Belichick really schemed against him. Uh, James White led in catches and receiving yards, and he uh, scored a rushing touchdown, so that's interesting. I know Damian Harris got run at the end, but is he just the hammer at the end of games now? Because Stevenson fumbled, and he was inactive, so that was interesting. Uh, this is the Corey Davis I, I know right here, the one with two catches for eight yards or whatever loser line he put up uh so i don't know if he's going to be viable every week he should be better than this but um and michael carter uh, is the best back in the jets backfield by a wide margin and uh look maybe his pass protection is lacking a little bit but um he's got to he's got to be out there more often than not a couple takeaways and i'm gonna kind of try to enter weave some uh waiver wire talk into the pod so you don't have to like, do a full segment at the end possibly but um, James White, we saw Damian Harris. He got his work still. He got a touchdown and everything. No, um, no Rondre Stevenson, as you said, which is big. But um, it feels like the old days is going to be Sony Michelle and James White. Same thing. So if game script depends on more of a running game, Harris will be good. If not, James White's going to get his no matter what it looks like. James White's uh, rostered in 42% of Yahoo leagues right now. Is he one of your top priorities to pick up this week at running back, or is there other options that we can talk about later? No, no, James, there's not a lot of, of options. So James White is going to be uh, top of board if he's available for sure. The other thing I was going to bring up real quick is you mentioned um, – you mentioned, um, oh, I just totally blanked on the Jets Michael wide Carter. receiver. No, oh, the Jets Corey wide Davis? receiver, Corey Davis. I think that's the kind of combination of what uh, Belichick loves to do. He takes out your best weapon. Yes, that's what he does. yes, yes. So yes. I, I, I think Davis can be fine. It's gonna be one of those. I, I think I wouldn't be shocked if he's low rostered this week. We'll talk about him on Friday's show, and you, you have some fun there. I think that's very, very interesting. What I also want to bring up, though, we saw it for the second straight week. Braxton Berrios led them in targets again. He has 18 targets on the year, 12 catches for 124. He's rostered in 0% of leagues. Should it stay <laughs> that way? Uh, I mean, if Jamison Crowder is going to play this week, then yeah, because I think all those snaps will go away for Berrios. And it looked like he was going to play this week, which is why he was still unowned. But he'll get picked up. And then Jamison Crowder will be healthy. He dropped right away. You know, you know how it goes. So yeah, just keep an eye because Crowder will come back, but he gets injured a lot during the season. So and it's a groin to... injury, man. Yeah. So you know those things linger and and stay. And he he picked it up during the week. So you know, a, a great start for Crowder. By the way, here's some COVID. Now you have a groin injury. Then he had an ab thing before too. So something you and great. I can't relate to. So it's cool. No, we don't have abs. No, so. we don't. We do. They're just hiding, just like everything else. Yeah, they're um, hibernating for winter. The winter don't is feel my bad for Barrios. He's dating a culpa, so he's a culpa. He's fine. Don't worry about yeah, it. Everything's good in his world. Broncos at Jags. Broncos 23-13. Teddy B looks outstanding. The Broncos lead the entire NFL in air yards, which if you told me Teddy Bridgewater would be doing that, <laughs> you'd be blowing my mind. Uh, we saw the first game, Sons, Jerry, Judy, Court and Sutton went bananas. Patrick still had a good game, but Sutton went crazy. Jags still have a lot of work to do, Bogman. Sutton's my man. Uh, Trevor Lawrence has looked like garbage he need like he's gonna get better and he's still my favorite guy for rookie of the year and all that stuff but he has they've got to play better than this and the weapons are there and i think they will i think they'll set him up for success he's not hitting short throws so once you start hitting those i mean he's throw some beautiful deep balls we, we've seen it but um he, i think he'll get going uh, broncos another def, uh, tough defense to play against uh but melvin gordon led in snaps well over javante williams 41 to 28 that's a little troublesome for Javante moving forward. I think he'll eventually be the guy, but when? You know what I mean? And he had a better game than Melvin Gordon this one. And Robinson, now we don't need to be afraid of him. We need to be afraid of how crappy this Jags offense is. But he did out-snap hide 41-14. to 14. So that's yeah, not it wasn't even close. close. Yeah. yeah, it was good. It was, and they and on the early drives, they kind of made a point to go back to, oh, we have this guy. Like, let's use yeah. him a little bit, which it just how often going to be in a game to use him is the question, like you said. Right, so right, right. that's the tough part. Real quick on the Denver side, if we're talking waiver wires, real quick. We talked about him on last week's show. Still only 22% roster. Tim Patrick, he, to me, he's the clear number two there out like receiver wise font fans probably number two but you got patrick there let's say he's the three what size league do you need to be in to roster him um i mean i think if you have some deep benches or some wide receiver issues you could roster him in a 12 you would be probably your last guy but 14 to 16 he's definitely a guy that you need to roster for sure um he is a guy over uh, KJ Hamler. Hamler's just a big play dude right now. Yep. So I think he can get better, yeah. but he's, he's super young. Uh, so I, I think that uh, Patrick is your vet, and, and they're clearly targeting him in the red zone. So uh, good on. 
And spe- speaking of, and I grabbed Patrick in a few leagues last week because I used him last year. Remember the good things he can do for you. Um, speaking of red zone targets, Noah Fant is the main dog at the tight end, but your boy Albert O is getting lots of love in the red zone. So it's kind of an all or nothing type play, kind of like Gronk, but in a different Dude, situation. Aqua Boonham is, is, he is definitely a red zone target. He is a good tight end out of Missouri, just a receiving tight end too. So a uh, little, little uh, Mark Andrews esque in there. You know what Ooh, I mean? So keep him on your radar. If anything happens to Noah Font, run. Like I had to bring him up because that's Bogwin's boy, and you know it's because he pronounced his whole name when I said Albert O. So you yeah, know, for you. Uh, Bills at the Dolphins. This one, Bills thirty-five nothing. I knew they would dominate. Not like this. Not having Tua helps. Um, Brissett wasn't bad. I'll give him that much. He he kind of was decent, but it didn't matter. Bills did their thing. They dominated this football game. Uh, what's your thoughts on this one? Because to me, it was just, it's hard to even get too excited about this game. I mean, I think Brissett was decent is the most Homer thing you've ever said on a line star. Well, show. I, no, I legit thought it was like three sixes. I thought he'd go on that shot and he didn't uh, go there. Okay. Well, uh, I think the annoying thing here was uh, Zach Moss was activated and scored two touchdowns, but he got out snapped 43 to 18 by Singletary. Yeah. Like, that's not good. I mean, if you're a Zach Moss owner, great, but did, did you really have. The cojones, the mobbles to start him. I don't think you did. So, no. um, to a leaving with an injury hurts everything because the whole Dolphins offense looks like garbage without him. So, uh, but Buffalo is back on track. Stefan Diggs is a man. Josh Allen is the man. So, you know, that first game against Pittsburgh was rough, but uh, they're going to be okay. Yeah, Singletary looked really good again. Like you talked about, he got out snapped and he looked really, really good for the second straight week, which was promising to see. We'll see how long that lasts for. And then Jalen Waddle looked good even with Brissett. And that's a promising sign. Will Fuller is expected back this week. A lot of conflicting news coming out of Miami, but he was no, back. He got in, back to um, practice today. So yep, he's there. And they're saying they're expecting him to be ready this week. And that's what the yeah. report I read said. We'll see. We'll let you guys Thank know God. later week how that one plays out. Yeah, no doubt. Niners at the Eagles. This game was the, one of the more disappointing football games of the entire slate. Niners win 17 to 11, but no one won, really. No one won this game. <laughs> if you didn't watch it. So what's your thoughts on this one? Because it was just, to me, it was. It was bad. I can't even go there. It was just horrible for me. Yeah, I mean, Ayuk was terrible again. I think that was the the biggest thing I took away from this game. Uh, but I think he's going to be okay still. I'm not willing to get off the the Brandon Ayuk train. So, uh, you know, every non-Debo was bad for San Francisco in this game. Eli Mitchell got banged up, but he came back. Now they're hosting a bunch of free oh agents because Hasty went out with an ankle injury. I mean, they are they might be more cursed than the Ravens at running yeah. back. It's insane. So uh, we'll see, you know, you have to pay attention to those guys. I think the most concerning, though, was um, Devontae Smith just got nothing here. And I know he had a million targets, but Jalen just could not get the ball to him because he was harassed. And we saw Carson Wentz behind this line last year have a tough time. So uh, Atlanta has no push up front at all whatsoever. Um, You know, I'm pretty sure I don't know if Tom Brady broke a sweat in the game against. What game are you talking about? Uh, Niners, uh, Eagles. Eagles. Yeah, yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, oh. is that the Falcons last week had no oh, okay. push gotcha. against gotcha. the Eagles. So, um, the Niners obviously got in there against Hurts and pressured and made him run. So, uh, I, I just, I'm worried about that uh, offensive line. But you, we've seen one of the best defensive lines in the NFL and one of the worst offensive lines against them. So, hopefully, they meet somewhere in the middle for Jalen and the run game and everybody else. Because, I mean. Wes Watkins was the only one that had a decent game here, and it's because he had a 91-yard catch that didn't even score a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, that's bananas. That's 91, 91 without touchdowns, nuts. I'm I'm worried about George Kittle right now. I know I probably shouldn't be, but the way they're using him was like insanely terrifying to me. He'll go nuts. He'll go. Yeah, nuts. he's going to. So like, I'm not saying never drop him or anything like that, but. This should have been a week he feasted, and he did not. So very, very rough yeah. to see. And if TJ Yeldon or Lamar Miller or one of the other like ancient guys makes the Niners team, don't pick them up, please. Not yeah. for now. Like Just stay away for now. We'll see what happens. Rams-Colts, this was a fun one. Rams win 27-24 on the road in Indianapolis. We saw Cooper Cup go bananas yet again. Stafford got the job done. Uh, Carson Wentz has two sprained ankles. So this could be a fun week coming up here. Uh, what's your takeaway from this game where all of a sudden Michael Pittman's the man again? Yeah, Michael Pitt was a man, but no one will be the man with Jacob Beeson because he's not good. So, I no. mean, I think he was 0 for 1 with a pick in this game. He was terrible. So, uh, I'm not excited about this Colts offense without him. Um, I think the biggest thing was uh, 13 to 10 Henderson and Michelle uh, touches, but 
Uh, Michelle or uh, Henderson did have more catches and he left with a rib. Yeah, a lot injury. of that was post injury. Yeah. Picked up a, a rib injury as well. So Sonny Michelle might be a play uh, this week for the Rams. Uh, Cup is obviously Safford's favorite target. Um, uh, and, but I think Robert Woods is going to get going too. So I'm not, there's a, a, through two weeks. It's a long season, everybody. So yep. two weeks, I'm not willing to give up on Ayuk or Woods. Um, you know, a lot of these players say Quan, I'm just not, I'm, I'm not a panicker. So yeah, far too early, far too early to give up on the big guys. That's for sure. Yeah. Sony Michelle rostered into 60% of leagues. I'd make a switch on that and make that happen real quick people. Cause if, if, uh, Henderson misses time, obviously Michelle shows he can at least carry enough of the load to make it interesting. Uh, Van Jefferson and still a guy that's just left for the waiver wire for now. He's still got, he got targeted quite often in back-to-back games. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely uh, one of the few waiver wire ads. This week is bad for the wires. So we'll, we can talk about it at the end and kind of go through them. Uh, but I, I I picked up Jefferson because I had a couple guys go out on Sunday. So he was an ad and looks like he might be a guy for them. I'm kind of surprised yeah. Deshaun Jackson isn't seeing more snaps. But. Yeah, zero snaps, I believe, this past week. Yeah, that was not impressive. Good. Um, Raiders at the Steelers. Uh, Raiders win 26-17. Deontay Johnson gets injured to finish the game, but he's apparently fine. Big Ben looks old. David Carr threw for over 400 yards, but he had an MRI on Monday. They expect him to play this weekend. Derek so Carr. Derek Carr. Way. God, I did every week. Every week I do that one. It's like Alex and Joey Cora for me. I can never get them right. Um, Derek Carr did that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been an interesting weekend. Uh, Rugs showed up after not doing much in week one. So what's your takeaway here without being a homer? Yeah, I mean, look, the this uh, I, I'll say the first thing is that the Steelers defense look way more playable this week. TJ Watt went out. Um, then we had uh, a Lulu break his ankle. Not great. Hayden and Bush didn't play. So if that is going to be moving forward, TJ Watt is questionable for this weekend. I got no idea what's going on with Bush and Hayden if they play. But, um, you know, Cincinnati could have a big game against Pittsburgh this week if they're out out four of their starters again this week. So, um, and two, it's already down. So they're really down five of their starters, but, uh, Najee looked, you know, the run game looks pathetic, but Najee caught five balls. He scored a touchdown on one. So I'm not worried about him moving forward rugs. Look, I love rugs and I think he's going to be big, but he is a, we just talked about, you know, old Deshaun Jackson. He is one of those guys where he's going to get, get you two catches for 13 yards one week. And then five for 116 and a touchdown the next week, right? That's just how he works. He's a big play guy. He should be what your wide receiver three uh, or your risky guy. Like if you have some high floor players in DFS, throw out rugs for a ceiling play. You know what I mean? So uh, he is that guy. Third and Renfro. I mean, they every third down they throw he's to Renfro. A it's he's, he's, a, he's a Cole Beasley. He's so yeah, he amazing. Yeah, and the Steelers double bracketed Darren Waller said, you're not going to beat us. So they beat us with Foster Moreau and Henry Ruggs. And this yeah, is no yeah. yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't run the ball to save their lives. So, uh, and they still beat the Steelers. So frustrating day for me, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Kenyon Drake was okay out of the backfield, but they still love to use uh, Peyton Barber, which is crazy. They uh, said if Jacobs is out again, that he's going to get those carries. It's so. crazy. So he might be some viability later this week if that news comes out. Other thing I want to ask is how legit is this back to back weeks, Derek Carr? Like, is this because he's, he's shown signs of it throughout his career, but nothing consistent? He's looked pretty darn good for the first two games. Is this is this a new Derek Carr? I gotta say, man, I, I it's not that I'm surprised by Derek Carr. Like, if Derek Carr is 100 percent healthy and has a decent offensive line and run game, he can put this together but i'm surprised that this old line has gelled so quickly they lost three starters so they and they lost in so good last week who was a starter for them as well so i'm just surprised that they've gelled together so well against some good you know good baltimore team and a decent steelers team so um i'm the legit surprise but uh, you got it you'd probably be Second runner up to Kyler Murray for MVP right now. Yep. The season ended after week two. And the Dolphins head to Las Vegas this week. And so a three and a Raiders team is a very real thing coming up here when we talk next week. It's going to be crazy. Especially Bang- if it's beset. Yep, exactly. And I didn't expect it to be. Uh Bengals at the Bears. Bears win 20 to 17. This game was disappointing as well. Not quite da- da- Niners. Eagles disappointing, but disappointing to say the least. Uh Dalton went down with an injury. We saw some fields and Dalton came back. Dalton's banged up again. He's supposed to be the starter. We'll see how that goes. Bengals on the flip side, it was, it was messy. So what's your takeaway here? Because it feels like we didn't get the real Bengals team, and the Bears just need to go to fields. Look, the Bears defense is good. You know, they played a really tough matchup against the Rams, and the Rams also had the entire offseason to prep for them. So uh, they look good. Andy Dalton's never going to win you 
games in the yep. NFL. Now you got to do with your defense and your run game. If you are the bears and they didn't have a lot going on, uh, you know, they, they didn't have a lot going week one this week, Roquan Smith looked great. Uh, they stopped the run. I think Joe Mixon had, you know, average three yards per carry or something like that. 20 carries for like 68 yards or whatever he had. Um, just like hammering right in front three yards in a cloud of dust that that type of NFL is long gone. But I don't know that there's so much you can pull from here because even if the people that are being credit uh, critical against Justin Fields, the dude didn't practice with the ones all week because yeah, he wasn't exactly. expected to go in. He's going to get to practice with the ones all week. I expect him to start this week. I don't think Andy Dalton's going to go. And I think that after he has one huge week, that's it for Dalton. It's going to be a yep. wrap. It's just a field team. I, I think that's going to be the way it goes moving forward. I don't care if Matt Nagy sends someone out, out to tell the reporters, uh, oh, by the way, Andy Dalton's still our guy if he's helping. You know, yeah. Whatever you say, pal. Yeah, they, the guy's got. He's going to have to save his job. He is on the hot seat. So yeah, and they want they want Fields to still practice job. hard this week. They want him to earn it, basically. So yeah. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will mention is Fields had a connection with Darnell Mooney quite a bit. He has 15 targets on the year with 11 catches. He could be an interesting target at 45 percent of leagues. Um, Texans at the Browns. Browns win 31 21. Texans hung in there for a while. Tyrod looked great. Then Tyrod got hurt. And Tyrod's already out for Thursday night football. So there goes that one. Uh, Browns are looking really good. I know it was Texans, but they're looking good. Chubb got a big run at the end. Mayfield looked good. Not a whole lot else that's new to me, except Landry's going to be out for a while, too. Yeah, he sprained his MCL, so we'll see how long. But uh, they're saying OBJ is supposed to be back this week. This was the yeah. plan the whole time, they said. I wish they would have informed oh. us, but yeah. uh, OBJ is supposed to be back. Um, but the tight ends ticked up a notch for the Browns, so maybe a little All three DFS of them. play. Of yeah, of Njoku, of Bryant or Hooper, you know what I mean? Uh, DPJ, uh, Donovan Peoples Jones had the most snaps for the Browns in this game, so he will be the number two behind Odell. Uh, but you can't use any Texan that's not named Brandon Cooks, he's the only one you can use. So, yep, he's a beast. Keep using him. I don't care who's quarterback, to be honest, because they have nowhere else to throw the football. So, <laughs> have fun with it. Uh, Saints at the Panthers, Panthers are looking good. It's amazing when someone gets away from Adam Gase, how. Fresh and sweet, the roses <laughs> smell. Sam well, also, test. you go from Adam Gase to Joe Brady, who Joe Brady was the orchestrator of the uh, Panthers uh, of, or the um, Tigers' amazing offense for LSU when they went on that run and set With every girl. single national yeah. record that Alabama broke last year. You know, yeah. so um, he's a great OC and is doing the right thing. And they get a banged up Thursday uh, night game here against these uh, Texans. So yeah. uh, they should steamroll the Texans. Double but, digits coming up. Yeah, I mean. I was more concerned about Alan Kamara had five yards. Uh -huh. Like Jameis Winston might lose his job real quick. So maybe they give him another week, but I would not be shocked to see Sean Payton because he loves him some Taysom Hill to uh, end up moving it over to Taysom Hill. Yeah, see, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. But the funny thing is, it's like, what did you expect? This is what Winston does. He has big weeks. He has crappy weeks. It's like, this is the Jameis Winston experience, but that's not what <laughs> Payton wants. That's, like, that's not a team that's expected to go 500. Not a team like Sean Payton wants to throw out there. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Panthers looking really good. Uh, Moore is just an absolute monster. And CMC, 30 touches in back-to-back -back weeks. I think he's good, folks. Um, Vikings at the Cardinals. This one did not disappoint. Cardinals win 34-33. Vikings missed a field goal at the end of the game. Got 31-yard chip shot. That's a stinger. But but um, they looked real good. Jefferson got his. Thielen got his. Um, Cousins looked decent in the pocket. Kyler's the MVP. Hopkins was a ghost after the first drive, but um, Moore was awesome. I, it was a great football game, Bugman. Yeah, it was. It was a really good one, and uh, you know, not surprised that the Cardinals won. Surprised that the the Vikings hung in because the Cardinals looked absolutely dominant week one. But that's kind of what week two was, like you mentioned at the top here, Bob. So uh, I think the most interesting thing for me would would be. Rondell Moore, and he had the fewest amount of snaps among uh, Arizona wide receivers, by the way, too. So Kirk had more, Green had more, obviously Hopkins did. So, um, but I think he is a sneaky play moving forward, and definitely an add and stash if your benches are deep enough. Because I, yeah. I love watching that guy at Purdue. He will get banged up, but uh, he's healthy right now, so we got to roll with him. Somehow only rostered in thirty four percent of Yahoo leagues. So I, I'd, I'd be looking to fix that if you have room to stash, like Bogman said, and. Uh, you know, if you're a if you're a cook owner, you got to make sure you have Madison because he got dinged up. He left the game twice, so yep. just monitor that stuff. 
Good call on that one, Alexander Madison. I, I've told Bogman on, on the other sh- the radio shows that every time I hear that name, I think the, the play Alexander Hamilton. It just it <laughs> needs, it needs to happen. So definitely in play there. Falcons at the Bucks. This one, the Falcons were down 28-25. They were covering this game early fourth quarter. I'm like, oh, they're going to do it. And then Brady threw his fifth touchdown pass, and then Ryan threw back-to-back pick sixes of the same DB, and that's all she wrote. Mike Evans went off. Uh, we saw some Gronk, two more touchdowns there. Falcons, Ryan didn't look great. He got the job done to Ridley and company, but this was pretty much all Tom Brady and company. Yeah, I mean, this is this amazing wide receiver core. Now, uh, you know, the thing here is, is it's going to be hot potato. Mike Evans was week one. AB was this week, the, the guy that was missing. So as long as Gronk is healthy, I think that's going to be uh, the issue. So um, then there may be a week where Gronk goes quiet and, you know, all three of those guys eat, but Mike Evans was a big guy here. I mean, Brady's just unbelievable. Uh, more annoying stuff on the Atlanta side. I just can't stand Cordell Patterson. So um, yeah. he's got a role yeah. and you have to just kind of accept that specifically if you're a Mike Davis, uh, Mike Davis owner or uh, someone like me who promoted him all off season. So, which by the way, I don't think I got one share in my season. Oh, I have now. plenty of shares, Mike Davis, because I was on board with you on this. The one bright side, tons of targets and get seven targets. So, the Falcons should be playing from behind a lot, which might bode well for Davis, but that's a tough thing to count on week to week. Uh, and the fact that Patterson's actually like the goal linebacker and stuff. Like Patterson was a guy we used to think of like, oh, he's the next great punt returner. And right. now he's yeah. like, now he's a legit RB2. And like if you're in a non-PPR league, he's got some flex viability from time. Like it's bizarre. Like I just I, I can't even roster him because I can't bring myself to that level, but I understand <laughs> it because I guess it's just the Mike Davis love I have too. So very, very tilting with you. But uh, keep an eye on that situation because it seems like it's going to be a mess going forward. Yeah. And Pitts uh, got more involved. So happy Pitts did that. get more involved. That was very, very true. Titans at the Seahawks. Titans went in to the land of the 12, won 33 to 30. Absolutely awesome game. Derrick Henry went full beast mode on this one. If you play DFS, over 50 DraftKings points for you on this one. Tannehill looked good, but no touchdowns or anything. AJ Brown kind of disappeared. Julio had a week, but then you still had Russ doing Russ things to lock it and company. But uh, the story is Derrick Henry is letting people know that he's still very, very good. And he's catching passes. Yeah, I mean, Derrick Henry is still clearly the man. And the offense runs through him. Love to see Julio bounce back. So uh, lock it with another huge game. I don't know that there's really anything to pull from this game. I mean, this was exactly what you'd expect. Just the defenses didn't play very well. The offenses did. So uh, if you stack this game, you did a great job. Definitely. Cowboys at the Chargers. People wanted to stack this game. Did not turn out so well. It was a, a I'm not going to say good football game. It was a, a frustrating football game. Dak Prescott was okay. Not great. Um, you had Zeke sh- splitting those with Pollard, and Pollard looked really, really good. Uh, and then on the Chargers side, Herbert was okay. Allen got his, but not like what you'd think. Mike Williams feasted. Cowboys went 20-17 to 17 in L.A. where it sounded like you were in Dallas. Yeah, I mean, look, well, the Cowboys travel doesn't matter. You know, uh, people uh, grew up, they were the fair weather in the 90s and all their kids are growing up now, too. So uh, that's just the way the way she goes. But um, uh, Cooper will just look banged up in, in this game. You know, it, I think he's just exhausted because he's caught so yeah. many balls. So uh, Cooper looked a, a little exhausted. Pollard had a great game. Pollard's a good back, dude. But. Look, I'm not, uh, once again, not panicking on Zeke. He outsnapped Pollard 44 to 21. And I think Pollard had like 16 touches. So it's kind of, if you keep giving him the ball when you put him out there, eventually defensive coordinators are going to understand that he's getting the ball if he's out there. So, um, you know, that should be a little different this week. And, um, you know, uh, Mike Williams with a huge game was a, a little surprising to me, but he's good. So um, it, he might finally be making that step of, you know, earning his draft spot as a, um, you know, top half of the first round guy from a couple years ago. But um, there's not much to pull from this game either outside of, you know, in season long looks, they went back to Justin Jackson after going with Larry Roundtree last week. So it's just the guy behind Eckler is a mess right now. Yeah. And the other thing is everyone was worried about Eckler's target share on in week one. He was just fine in week two. He was back to being the guy getting targeted often out of the backfield. So don't worry about that. With that Dallas situation with Zeke and Pollard, how are you addressing that in fantasy? Because I think they're kind of like Pollard has earned flex viability, at least to me. Yeah, I don't think it really takes away much from uh, Zeke, though. Like Zeke is going to get his. We saw him score a touchdown here. He had more touches than Pollard did still. So, um, But yeah, Pollard is definitely, there's just two viable backs here. That's all. 
All right, Sunday night football. Ravens get the W, 36-35. I was shocked, very, very shocked. That's when uh, Mahomes did his thing. Kelsey was a monster. They shut down Tyree Kill, which was surprising. So just meant Pringle and Demarcus Robinson and Hardman, they got some work in there, which is that's why they have all the toys. So they looked good. Uh, a, a fumble snack by CEH, and he just didn't look good, period, to me. I've never been a CEH guy, so that was uh, surprising slash disappointing to some. And then on the flip side, Lamar looked good. Mar- uh, Hollywood Brown keeps playing. They got Andrews. Um, a very, very interesting football game that uh, I'm kind of bummed the Chiefs did not win. But, hey, good football on a Sunday night. What's your thoughts on this one? I mean, I hate the CEH stuff because the fumble really uh, makes me mad because it's at the end of the game. and I'm hoping that they go back to him in a big division matchup this week against the Chargers. Uh, I think the Chargers uh, either won this game or they pushed Kansas City into overtime last year. Yeah, um, it was a really good game. I remember it last year, but uh, uh, I, I I hope they go back to CH, but there's no way in hell I'm going to use him in DFS this week uh, just because that fumble Andy Reid gets frustrated, man. So, um, but uh, outside of that, the Ravens backfield is just a complete disaster. So Marquise Brown and Mark Andrews and Lamar are the only guys you can really have any faith in going forward. I did love that Byron Pringle has now joined with Pringles to make a Kansas city yeah. barbecue stack chip. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. But you know, not worried about Tyreek Kelsey had the huge game here. So yeah. Patrick Mahomes is the man still. Yeah, don't worry about them. My my Mahomes Kelsey combo in my home league was a uh, great because people thought they were actually <laughs> going to beat me this week. I was like, <laughs> enjoy Sunday night football, and uh, so that was beautiful. Monday night football as a kind of cl- well, not clock. People know I'm a Packers fan outside of the Dolphins, and I'm an Aaron Rodgers fan to boot. They win thirty five seventeen. The Lions pushed them for a while there, then they finally took over. Aaron Jones four touchdowns on the day. Rodgers threw for three or four. Um, Adams looked good. It was uh, what you'd expect. I actually, I thought it might have been worse than this, but when it mattered, they put the screws down to him and they win by eighteen. Look, I, I, they win by eighteen, so they covered. And you know, when you just look at the score, you go, "Okay, this is kind of what we expected." Yeah. But I tell you what, Jared Goff pretty. was clean until yeah. the fourth quarter. That I offensive did. line is doing a great job of keeping him clean. Uh, the run game, a little messy. Uh, Goff actually led them in rushing yards with 46. Um, but Swift and Williams were in there. But they just obviously, when you get behind, you're not going to have that many chances. So only eight carries for Swift, seven for uh, Jamal Williams. Uh, but Quintez Cephas had the most snaps, and he had – Four catches for 63 yards and touchdown. Just missed a one-hander, too. That would have been awesome right at the half. So he looks to be their main wide receiver moving forward. I thought it was going to be St. Brown. He had three catches but only went for 18 yards um, and only five targets. But Hawkins had scored a touchdown as well. Aaron Jones went ham for the four touchdowns. Uh, Devontae Adams is still amazing, but... I, I think it's kind of the same deal. There are actually might be more viable players for fantasy on the Lions than are on the Packers because for the Packers, A.G. Dillon had five rushes for 18 yards and one catch. It was all Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams, Tunyon, and Rodgers. That's it. That's all you can use. So Yeah, you'll, you'll get the random MVS game or something or Lazard game, but it's the main dogs, like you said. The Lions are interesting because I think St. Brown will still have his moments, but it's Hawkinson and, like you said, Cephas. Like they were going to him early and often when it mattered most. It was kind of his his safety net when Hawkinson wasn't available. Swift out of the backfield was okay too, but I think Cephas will be an interesting one to look at this week on their waiver wire. So, um, yeah, definitely something to look at. And, yes, the Packers won by 18, but before this, the fumbled snap and the pick, it wasn't uh, that kind of game. So the, the Lions are looking better than I think people are going to give credit for. Uh, good old Dan. Good old Dan. Yeah. PC, PC principal. Making things happen over there. <laughs> All right, that wraps up our week two recap of things. Before we get to the waiver wire, make sure you guys check out Thrive Fantasy, sponsor of the show. Prop betting come to you. 20 picks in each tournament. You have to make 10 picks. Take the over-under. They're weighted in different points. Get the most correct answer and the most points. Win some serious cash in these tournaments. Use promo code LINESTAR to get a first-time deposit match up to $100 and two free months of LINESTAR premium over there at Price Picks. Okay, Bogman, we're at the quarterback position. You know, you got guys like <laughs> Eason and Brissett. Um, are you really running to grab any of these guys right now? Or are you looking at, um, you know, grabbing like a, a Derek? Derek Carr shouldn't be available, but you never know what league you're in. 26% a, a, rostered. So uh, a Teddy Bridgewater is probably out. There. He's only 17% in uh, if Yahoo League Jets. right now. They're playing the Jets too. Yeah. Danny Dimes is 19% rostered. They're playing Sam Donald, 15. the Falcons. Yeah, so, against the Texans. 
<laughs> All these guys are in play this week. Like you said, uh, even golf looked pretty good. They play Baltimore, which is a tough matchup. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think my favorite one here is probably going to be Teddy B against uh, the Jets just because he's rolling right now. I uh, don't really particularly care for him as a quarterback, but he's got confidence right now. So uh, he is good. And, you know, they said the reason he won this job is because the guys like playing for him. So I'm in on Teddy B for sure. He's my number one quarterback this week. Yeah, I'm with you there. We head over to the running back position. You know, it's going to be a little different. I mentioned Sony Michelle's rostered in only 60% of leagues. That's probably somebody you can go look to. Tony Pollard in 54% of leagues. Not sure it's quite Michael Carter time. I agree with you, though. Like, I have him stashed in a lot of places. James White's in 42% of leagues. So you got Madison. You got Gainwell. Who are guys you're looking at at the running back position? Yeah, the under 50% guys. I mean, Carter's right at 50. So uh, I, I love to grab and stash him. But James White is the main guy. Uh, McKissick is also 29%. He had a big game yeah, on Thursday. Uh, so he he's a big one. I mean, after that, it might be Cordero Patterson. Maybe James Hasty at 6% if he's yeah. healthy. Uh, could be a sneaky one uh, should Eli not be able to go this week. So uh, that's probably who I'm picking from. Just not a lot out there. When we head to the wide receiver position under 50%, I mentioned Darnell Mooney. If Fields is the guy, they got a little rapport going. Maybe that disappears with more time with the ones, but he's interesting. You got Henry Ruggs at 35%, Rondell Moore at 34%. I still believe in Jalen Rager. Uh, James Crowder's coming back. He's 25%. He's PPR gold. I mentioned Tim Patrick. Who are some of the guys you're looking at in the wide receiver position? I mean, Tim Patrick is still a big one for sure. Um, Rondo Moore, I mentioned before, at 34% or whatever you said, is a good one. Ruggs is boomer bust. Um, but if you're going deeper leagues, um, Manny Sanders had six targets, I think. They, they yeah. got a tough matchup against Washington this week. But uh, I've always liked Manny Sanders, obviously drafted by the Steelers. So I watched the early part of his career intently. Zach Pascal scored touchdowns in two straight weeks. So 15% against Tennessee, who just gave up a bunch of passing yards uh, to Seattle, of course. And look, real deep league. KJ Osborne is getting everything I thought Tyler yeah. Conklin was going to get. And he's two percent rostered, so uh, he's a decent one as well. Yeah, Osborne's a great call. They've, they're going three wide a lot, and they're using them a plenty. So I like that one quite a bit. When we head to the tight end position, it's kind of messy here. I'll be honest, under fifty percent, like Austin Hooper, but there's three guys there. Jared Cook hasn't really done a ton, but he's you know thirteen targets, eight catches, not that shabby, I guess. Um, the uh, the love for Ferkser has not panned out for many. Yeah. It's just been a, it's been an overall. I guess the best one it could be in your backyard. Farmouth could be an yeah. interesting one to look at. Farmouth's a decent one, uh, but also Cole Komet's under fifty yep. percent. He's thirty nine percent, and Max Williams at my old neck of the woods in uh, Arizona uh, is he got a lot of love this last week. A yeah, lot of yeah. love. Kyler kept looking at him. If you're going to double up Hopkins, these other guys are going to be open. So Hopkins got his work early. And then they went to Rondo Moore. They went to AJ Green. They went to Max Williams. Like Kyler is throwing that ball all over the place right now. So Max Williams in a deeper league could be a decent one. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, what else I like? That wraps us up for the episode. The recap episode of week two's action. It was another fun one. And week three, right around the corner. So get ready for the bets and picks podcast coming out to you guys on Thursday on the week three main slate DFS preview coming out to you guys on Friday. As always, make sure you follow Line Star on Twitter at Line Star app and at Line Star NFL. And go check out Thrive Fantasy using promo code Line Star for a first time deposit match up to $100 and a two free months premium Line Star package as well. Check out Bogman on Twitter at Bogman Sports. I'm at BD Intric. We'll be back with you guys next time. See you. Thanks for listening to Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Thrive Fantasy. Please like, comment, subscribe, and rate for good karma in your fantasy football games.